Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about slope fields. Okay, and what we're really talking about is more of a graphical perspective on uh, differential equations. So let's recall uh, from before. We were studying we studied uh, differential equations of this form. And these are what we call directly integrable. Okay, and that's because there's actually no, uh, no x on this side. Okay, obviously that's a, a, what I call a big limitation. So in, in what we want to do now is rectify that situation. Now we want to look at, look at uh, dx dt style equations where now we have an f of x comma t. So we can have both x and t in there. So this is, of course, is a, um, a, a, a much broader uh, category of differential equations of this form. Again, it's a first-order differential equation where we can write the, f uh, the, diff the, the derivative on one side is equal to that. Okay, so in terms of our most general DE definition, or f of x, x prime, and t, it's of the form um, uh, dx dt uh, minus f of x comma t, whatever this function is, equal to zero. Okay, so again, f of x comma t is just some uh, function. And in this class, of course, we're going to be seeing many, many different functions serving many different modeling purposes. Okay, but now let's just study it for a general f of x comma t and see what we can get out of this. Okay, so we want perspectives on this. So um, <clears throat> uh, another question then is, you know, um, basically, you know, what does uh, this DE uh, say? Okay, so what we want to have is this here is dx dt is equal to f of x comma t. All right, this is a given function. All right, so what do we know? Let's look at the parts. We see there we know a dx dt. All right, first of all, x of t is, is an unknown. Okay, that's always going to be our unknown, but we have these parts. We know f f dx dt. So graphically, this represents the slope of the tangent line uh, to x of t at a time, whatever time it is, okay? So, uh, so we know some information about x of t just by seeing this, and of course, because dx dt is equal to this given function x comma t, if I have, if, let's say I want to know if I have an x and a t, some point in space and time, I'll draw a little graph here, and there's my time there, and there's my x, right? I may not know what x of t does here. I don't know what it is, but I know it's slope at this point. If I actually plug this value in, I can get a slope. So I can actually draw a little slope there like that. All right, so clearly x of t is unknown, but it's some sort of function that whatever it is, this x of t, we know at that very point there is that slope of the tangent line has to be this fixed value given by the function f of x comma t. So we're going to use this now to understand more about what a DE says. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, generalize this concept and generate what we call a slope field out of that. Okay, so let's see if we can get started on that. Okay, so again, we have a, a, a DX DT is equal to F of X comma T. Right, and we know we can actually, for every point, uh, lots of points, Uh, we draw uh, slope lines indicating indicating um, uh, uh, sort of the how 
how x of t may uh, uh, may uh, graphically uh, be depicted. Okay, so let's operationalize this notion. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to actually break this down into steps. Okay, the first step is, of course, we're going to, uh, you know, pick an X, XT region of interest. And then what we're going to do is uh, uh, make a grid, an XT uh, grid, okay, in that region of interest. Okay, and then uh, draw slopes draw slopes uh, given by you know these these points f of x comma t at each x comma t point okay all right and then uh, and then um, what you should see is you know we're going to draw at each point we're going to draw these little slopes these little lines like this right uh, uh, and then, um, and then what we can do then is uh, you can trace out out uh, potential potential x of t solutions uh, that are a tangent to the uh, slope lines. Okay, so these slope lines, um, the, when we draw these little slope lines right here, draw slopes, and they're and they're basically just small lines. Together, this whole graph, this picture, is what we're going to call a slope field. Okay. All right, so let's uh, actually do an example to, to, to make these steps more clear. Okay, so in general, though, what we're going to do, again, I'm going to write this out graphically now. If I have some grid, I have some, I'm going to start at maybe T0 and go to T equals A, right, some point. I'm going to go from X0 up to some, uh, sorry, XA all the way to X up B. And, of course, I can draw, uh, I could draw a little grid throughout there like that. And then I want to draw a grid in between all that like that some grid lines okay and at each one of these points I'm gonna plug in that value of that function and draw a little slope okay and here maybe there's another slope and there's another one and you just have to spend time uh, drawing all these little slopes and of course if you have a if, if f, f of x comma t is positive of course you draw a slope like that uh, and if it's negative you draw a slope that goes down okay and, and you try to get the relative magnitudes of the slopes about right, but again, this is only going to be approximate. Um, all right, so that would be an example of some slope fields. And then what you do, of course, is you trace out solutions. So I start at that point, and I know my slope is going to kind of go like this maybe go down, and then go up, and then go down, or something like that. Right? So that would be a potential solution curve for our thing. All right, so of course the uh, key points here is uh, make sure, you know, your grid is, must be a fine enough resolution. Okay, uh, but not too fine, obviously, because then you're just going to be doing a lot of work. Okay, so it has to be fine enough resolution, and actually, in this particular example, I don't think that's exactly true here. Okay, so let's give an example. All right, let me try a very simple differential equation to start. So, dx dt is equal to negative x. Okay, and so I'm going to look at the grid, and it's going to be um, like this. I'm going to look at positive values of x. So here's my t on that end, and there's my x on this end. Okay. And I'm going to look at time equals 0, and I'm going to go out maybe to time uh, equal to 5. 
I'm going to start here at zero and work my way up um, like here. All right, and I'm going to maybe do this at about 0.1, and that's 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and that's 0.5. Okay. All right, so there's my grid point. So I'm looking at 0, 0, and then this, of course, is my f of x, and there is no t. Okay, and that's actually really important. When your f of x comma t is equal to f of only x, they call it an autonomous differential equation. Okay, and that's because it's not time dependent. Okay, so that's going to make our, system, our, our function a little simpler. So it actually doesn't depend on time at all. But at any rate, and that means whatever I draw here in this one column in my grid, I'm actually just going to repeat it over and over and over again as I go for different times because it, it really does not change at all for different times. Okay, so let's go forward like this. And maybe I'll do, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm just doing an approximate. So at zero, I plug in zero, and of course I get a zero slope. So that's going to be a little flat line going across like that. When I go up to point one, of course I'm going to get a slope that's actually negative point one. So it's just going to be very slight down. And point two is going to be slightly steeper. And slightly steeper still. Until it gets to about here where it's going to be a slope. Negative one half. All right. Because that's a point five there. That's my x value. I'm taking the negative of that. All right. So again, here, same thing. It's going to be zero slope. In fact, it's going to be zero across this entire grid for that that row of the grid. And here, they're all going to be the same. Just this very slight negative slope. And here, just slightly more. And slightly more here still. And slightly more. Again, this is only going to be approximate. You just try to do your best. You're just getting an idea. And if I want to go out a little further, I can get out a little further here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now uh, we've, we've, we've created my slope field. And it's, of course, a graphical depiction of the, the behavior that this type of DE is describing. And then what I'm going to do is my, I might actually uh, trace a few lines. So if I start here at the point x of 0 is equal to 0, of course, the slope is 0, so there should be no change. So I should just trace along here. Solution is going to be tangent, of course, to all these little slope lines. So, of course, we're going to get a solution x of t is just equal to 0. That's actually uh, you know, a pretty interesting solution. But now we want to try maybe one that starts up here, right? So I'm going to go down that way. And it has to just kind of go tangent as best as I can. It's going to follow. I'm just trying to fill in the line to make it a little bit more interesting. It's going to kind of go like that. Okay. All right. And so another solution that maybe starts at point 2. It might be tangent more or less to these slope field lines here. Like that. So we see here this looks like some sort of exponential decay. Uh, okay, and in fact that's true. In fact, if I actually were to pick, let's pick, uh, or sort of maybe pick or guess uh, solutions. We can actually pick, well, what if I actually picked um, uh, one half, if my solution was equal to x of t, is equal to one half e to the negative t. All right, let's see if we can actually verify this as a solution. And of course, this is an exponentially decaying solution. And I know this is a solution uh, for this particular one right here. In fact, I'll point right up to it. Okay. And so let's try it. So if I take the derivative of it, it's going to be negative one half e to the negative t. Okay. Clearly, that's equal to negative of one half e to the negative t, which I said was defined as negative x. So clearly, it does satisfy the differential equation. Okay. So there's our slope fields, uh, and. Um,
we can describe this behavior that definitely looks strongly like exponential decay, and we actually verify that that is in fact true, that is a solution. Um, of course, the magic of how we actually pick this solution, uh, we're going to get to that later. That was something I knew just because I've, I've practiced this enough to, to know. Uh, but uh, what we're, well, the goal here is clearly that the slope field tells you a lot about the, 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 the qualitative behavior of, uh, of what the DE is describing in terms of the behavior of solutions. And it, and it describes lots of different solutions and how they behave collectively. Okay, so let's do one more example to close this out. Okay, now let's talk about a non-autonomous differential equation, dx dt is equal to um, t minus x. Okay, so this is definitely going to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to, oops, there we go, move that across like that. I'm going to go from negative 5 all the way to 5. I'm going to go all the way down to negative 5 here, and all the way to 5. Again, this is the t-axis, and that's the x-axis. So there's my grid. I'll just do it in increments of, of unit increments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? I'm going to go in the negative direction. One, two, three, four, and then five down there. And one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So let's plug this in. So one thing we might want to look for is when is this function? This is my uh, this is my f of x comma t. When is this function? Uh, we want to ask maybe a, a, just a really brief question. When is this function function zero? What points in this plane are they zero? And it's clear that when t is equal to x, that line where f is equal to zero, and that's the, of course the point of a zero slope. Okay, so let's find out. That's clearly going to be this line, so I can draw that on there. And I'll just draw with a dotted line, so not too, it's not going to interfere with my resulting slope field. And everywhere on that line there, I can draw my little slope field lines to be flat, indicating zero slope. And I think that's a really uh, important tool or an important uh, way of getting yourself, uh, uh, getting, getting, your, getting your bearings when you're drawing these slope fields. Okay, now we might look for some other points. Um, maybe I want to look at points where the slope is equal to, to, um, to 1. Okay, so let's see if we can find that. So I, I set t, is e uh, t minus x is equal to 1. And that's going to happen, of course, when x uh, is equal to uh, t minus 1. Okay, so um, that's going to be at, at a point here. So when t is equal to 1, right, and then x is going to be equal to 0, right, so that'll be right there. And the slope is going to be 1. I can draw a, a line that's at a 45 degree angle. And it turns out this is a function that, of course, is this little dotted line. That's the t uh, minus 1 equals x line, right? And it's right there. So everywhere along that line, we get a 45 degree angle to the slope. So I think it's very important when you're drawing these slope fields, just be careful, go slow. Um, and, uh, and be careful and make sure you get yourself uh, you know, a few pieces of paper if you make a mistake. All right, so uh, for the rest of this, now I want to maybe look on, if I fix the t value here, so this is you know, t equals negative 3. Um, if I go up, for, so if I go up from there, am I gonna, I'm going to make x just slightly bigger than t, right? So I'm going to go from 0 to something uh, that's going to be uh, now negative, right? In fact, that's going to be a point where uh, f is equal to a negative 1 line. That'll be, this, that'll be the line x is equal to t plus 1. So now I can draw that dotted line there. So everywhere here, I can now draw a 45-degree uh, a line that goes in the opposite direction.
like so. Okay. Uh, and now if I go further, it's of course going to be even steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay. Likewise, it's just going to keep getting steeper and steeper and steeper, all the way up to a negative slide five slope there. Um, so it's going to get very steep up here in this upper corner. And I'm being a little bit rough in my thing, because I, what I'm really looking at is a general behavior. I don't really care about the exact. Once I get a few that are pretty exact, I can sort of uh, start being a little bit more approximate here. Right, it has to go like that. All right, now let's look back down here. We should be starting to get a uh, uh, positive two slopes here on this line. Now we can keep going. Of course, these slopes are never going to be straight up and down uh, because that would be um, that would be a, a, an infinite slope, but they're going to get very steep very quick. Okay, so now we see the, the general slope field here for this differential equation. Right now we want to maybe try uh, uh, looking at some very special solutions. Now if I look at the solution x equals t minus 1, we see that the, there the slopes all point right to each other. So if I start here, I'm just going to continue along on that line there. So in fact, I might want to actually use that. That is actually a solution. X is t minus 1. That's a solution. Let's check it, okay? So if I take dx dt, that's going to be equal to 1, right? Now, uh, on the other side, um, uh, if I actually plug it in, so if I t minus, and now wherever I see an x up here, I'm actually going to plug in t minus 1 t minus 1 to it. That'll make a t and a minus t that cancels the t's. And there's a minus a minus 1 that makes a 1. So clearly uh, it does, if I plug this into the differential equation, it certainly does verify that, that this is a solution. All right, now we can think of other solutions. If I start up here, right, we see after we're going to rapidly come down and then we're going to cross that point where it's zero slope and then we're going to kind of come in and sort of like Kind of land on on this this solution. It seems to be attracting all the other ones. So if I go like this, it's going to come in and eventually land there. And all of these solutions then are going to start. They're going to fall into line and go like that. So I don't know how to solve for these this equation yet. I don't know how to find all these solutions, but it's clear that I know the general behavior. So again, slope fields. Uh, what they're good for is, uh, you know, describing a qualitative uh, behavior. Okay, and that's what we're really trying to get an idea of what a DE is saying, what, what do the solutions do in general, and the slope field is an excellent way to graphically see what's going on. Okay, so in a later video I'll go over more examples and we'll, we'll show some examples of how to use technology to uh, create slope fields so you don't have to do this by hand. Okay, alright, thanks very much.